hello students welcome to the class today we are going to read lesson 2 from the poetry section of your class 10th english book this is a poem named the psalm of life which is composed by henry wadsworth longfellow s w longfellow his full name is henry wadsworth longfellow He was a famous American poet. He worked as a teacher of modern languages at Harvard University. He made significant contribution to the American literary tradition. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow was at got admiration both at the national and international level. Let's come to the poem The Psalm of Life here psalm means a sacred song or a poetical composition which is sung in the praise or worship of God as the title suggests the psalm of life means the song of life in which the poet has glorified life and its possibilities the poet has presented life as a celebration this poem carries a message of hope and encouragement it is an invocation to the mankind to follow the path of righteousness which is the right way of living the poet has holded an optimistic view of life in this poem he has described life in a very various way this poem is didactic in tone and lyrical in nature let's start the poem students now we will start reading the poem you will have to enjoy the recitation and understand the meaning and thought of the poem life is real life is earnest and the grave is not its goal thus thou art to dust returnest is not spoken of the soul here earnest means seriousness grave means death dust dust means sand or soil and gold means ink let's know the meaning of this stanza line by line life is real life is earnest in this stanza the poet refuses to accept that life is an empty dream instead he says that life is real and true it is not baseless or useless because it is seriousness life is earnest means life is seriousness we should not take life in a light way and the grave is not its goal the poet says that life is not a slow march to the grave we should not take death as the end of life does thou art to dust returnest in this line the poet says that our body is made of soil dust and after death it mixes with the soil but this line is not applicable to the soul because soul is immortal it does not mixes into the soil it remains after the death let's know let's see some comprehensive questions what is life and what is not its goal life is real and true that is not the goal of life what is the main quality of the soul the soul remains after the death and does not turn to dust as it is 
immortal here we will see the rhyme scheme of the poem rhyme scheme is a b a b it means the last word of the first line rhymes with the last word of third line alternatively last word of the second line rhymes with the last word of fourth line yes next come uh, come to the next stanza not enjoyment and not sorrow is our destined end or way but to act that each tomorrow find us farther than today here enjoyment means material pleasure sorrow means grief or pain destined future decided by fate and it means aim or goal act means work farther means advance let's know the meaning of this stanza in this stanza the poet has described the ideal way of living the poet says that in an ideal life there should be a balance between enjoyment and sorrow spending time in merriment or grieving over the loss or pain in life is not the right way of living we should not take enjoyment or sorrow as decided by fate our focus should be on work on working working diligently working so well working hard so that with every coming day we find us more advanced better learned better skilled human being than what we are at present thus in this stanza we see the poet has described that uh, we human being should focus on doing one's karma we should take all the eventualities of life as equal come to the questions what is meant by destined end the poet says that happiness and sorrow are not decided by fate so our motive or aim of life should not be limited to those how should we act in life we should work hard or diligently so that with every coming day we find ourselves more advanced than what we are at present next stanza in the world's broad field of battle in the beavock of life be not like dumb driven cattle be a hero in the strife here broad means vast or large beavock which means a temporary camp made by soldiers at the battlefield dumb means unable to speak driven means controlled or operated by others strife means struggle let's know the meaning in the words broad field of battle in this stanza poet has compared this word to a broad field of battle he says that this word is like a broad field of battle and in the beavock of life our life is like a temporary camp at that battlefield and we human beings are like a troops who came here who came in this world in this battlefield temporary to fight the battle of our life so what should we do be not like dumb driven cattle be a hero in the strife see so meaningful lines be not like dumb driven cattle animals also participated in the war in the battle but what is their role they are dumb and driven means operated or controlled by others 
they don't have their particular aim, goal or direction. We don't have to be like that dumb and driving cattle. We have to be a hero in that struggle. Means like a hero, we have to fight bravely in that war and finally win it. What has the world been compared to? The world has been compared to a large field of battle. How can we become a hero? We can become a hero by fighting bravely in the battle of life. Next and the last stanza. This is the last stanza. Let us then be up and doing with a heart for any fate. Still achieving, still pursuing, learn to labor and to wait. Fate. Here fate means destiny. Achieving means to gain something by hard work. Pursuing means to follow. And labor means work hard. In this last stanza of the poem, the poet inspires us, inspires the whole mankind to give up idleness and start working hard with a heart for any fate. It is meant that we don't have to focus on the consequence or result. We have to prepare ourselves for any fate, for any result. Our focus should be on working hard, still achieving, still pursuing. It means we have to achieve, we have to work hard towards achieving our goals in life and follow towards the goal of our life. Learn to labor and to wait. We have to learn to work hard and to wait patiently for the result. Thus we see this is a very inspiring, this is a very inspiring poem. Let's see the comprehension, comprehension questions. What does the poet mean by the words with a heart for any fate. The poet says that we don't have to think of the result. We should prepare ourselves for any fate. What should we learn? We should learn to work hard to achieve our aim in life without thinking of the result or consequence. Yes. Now, we will see the appreciation questions. What should be the aim of our life? We have read the poem and according to the poet, the aim of our life should be to work hard for the betterment of our future. What does the poet think about life? The poet thinks that life is not an empty dream. As the people think, instead it is real and true and it has definite aim. How can we make our lives wholesome, useful and successful? We can make our lives wholesome, useful and successful by not wasting our time and to make the most out of this short and transitory life. Keywords. These are some keywords from the poem which will help you to understand more about the poem. Earnest. I have told you the meaning of earnest. Earnest means seriousness. Life is real, life is earnest. Means life is a seriousness. Grave. And the grave is not its goal. The poet is meant by grave as death. He says that death is not the end of life. We should not take death as the end of life. Destined, destined end or way. The poet says that 
we should not think that enjoyment or sorrow are decided by fate the poet focuses emphasizes to do one's karma battle words brought in the world's broad field of battle the poet has compared this world to a broad field of battle cattle be not like dumb driven cattle means we have not to be like those animals who participated in the war but their role is not important they have to be of they have to be operated by others they don't have any particular aim or direction soul soul is immortal is not spoken of the soul means death is the end of life but is not the end of soul soul is immortal and it remains after the death it does not turn into dust strife be a hero in the strife it means we have to be a hero like a hero we have to fight this battle and to win it farther find us farther than today it means we have to work diligently so that with every coming day we find us more advanced than what we are at present dust means soil our body is made of soil does thou art to dust returnest is a very meaningful line of this poem be work be work means a temporary camp our life is like a be work means is like a temporary camp on that battlefield fate is not decided by fate the poet says that our life we should not take that our life our actions are should be decided by fate labor learn to labor and to wait the poet says that we have to learn to work and to wait patiently for the result let's sum up yes now we will summarize the poem and know the theme of the poem life is true and real live in the present the poet says that we have to live in the present and to live the fullest enjoy every moment soul is immortal and death is not the end of life life is to do one's karma yes poet has focuses on karma vad he says that we should not be dependent on fate rather we have to believe on our work on our actions don't waste your time and make the most out of this short and transitory life the poet says that this life is very short and transitory so we have to use the short time we have here on this earth and make the most out of this be a hero in this battle of life yes this is very inspiring and motivating line be a hero in this battle of life we have to be a hero in this struggle of life work hard to achieve our life achieve our aim in life without thinking of the result our focus should not be on the result we should have to focus on working and working next this is an exercise for recapitulation life is real complete the lines you have to complete the lines that are given here life is real life is what come here what will come here life is Ernest 
Next line. And the is not at school. What will come here? What is not the goal of life? Grave. Means grave is not the end or goal of life. Is not spoken of the soul. Yes. Soul. Because soul is immortal and we cannot say that soul will also end with the death. In the words broad. What will come here students? Broad field of battle. Yes, the world has been compared to the broad field of battle. In the next line, you have to complete it. In the, what will come here? In the beaver work of life. Yes. In the beavork of life. Beavork means a temporary camp made by the soldiers at the battlefield. Be a hero in? Yes. What will come here? In the strife. Yes. Very good. In the strife. Strife means struggle. We have to be a hero in the struggle of life. Next line, let us then be up and what will come here? And doing means means we have to give up idleness and start working. Next line, with a heart, what will come here? With a heart for any fate it means we have to start working without thinking of the consequence or the result we have to prepare ourselves for any fate for any result next line still still what come here what will come here Still achieving and still pursuing. Still achieving, still pursuing. The last line, learn to, what will come here? Learn to, what will have to learn? We have to learn to labor and to wait yes we human beings have to learn to labor and to wait for the result yes yes here are some matching words match the words in list a with their meanings in list b earnest list a earnest it means Seriousness, yes, it will match to seriousness. Act, act means work. Be work, what is meant by be work? Be work means a temporary camp. It will match to the temporary camp. Strife, it means struggle. And end means aim. Yes. So students, there are some homework for you to do at home. Learn four lines of the poem, the psalm of life. And next one is select any four pairs of the rhyming words from the poem and then add one word to each pair of them having the same sound. Make a table for this. Yes, you have to find out the rhyming words as I have told
told you earlier about the rhyming scheme of the poem i will repeat it the rhyming scheme of the poem is a b a b means the last word of the first line rhymes with the last word of the third line and the last word of the second line rhymes with the last word of the fourth line yes it will be helpful to you to find out the rhyming words yes students now we will start recitation of the poem again please enjoy it life is real life is earnest and the grave is not its goal does thou art to dust returnest is not spoken of the soul not enjoyment and not sorrow is our destined end or way but to act that each tomorrow find us farther than today in the words broad field of battle in the be work of life be not like dumb driven cattle be a hero in the strife let us then be up and doing with a heart for any fate still achieving still pursuing learn to labor and to wait yes students this is the poem the psalm of life composed by henry wadsworth longfellow hope you enjoyed the poem and learn the thought presented in the poem in this poem i would like to repeat the theme of the poem the poet has presented the life as a celebration he has focused on doing one's karma and he has says that we should not take eventualities in life as equal we should focus on working hard and prepare ourselves for any fate and we have learn to labor and to wait means we have focus on working and working and to wait patiently for the result thus this is a very inspiring and motivational poem which is very helpful in our life and we will have to apply the teaching of this poem in our life thank you students